All right, everybody, welcome. Here we are, Larry Long. We got a great video. I am doing this video with Jessica Kent, my partner in crime, who has a great channel. You gotta check her channel out. So what we did is we put out questions. We had over 1,100 questions. We're gonna pick some out. We don't know what we're doing. Jessica and I have no idea what these questions are, and I'm gonna answer. Well, I'll pick one answer, then she'll answer. And we'll go back and forth and do that. Before I get started with that, check us out on the YouTube member program. Check us out on Patreon. We have different levels. Jessica, first of all, welcome. How are you doing, Jessica? Thank you so much for having me back. I love hanging out with you, and I'm a little nervous. I don't know what everyone asked us, but we'll see how it goes. Can I pass on any? No. <laughs> I love your new dog. Thank I you. Dog. I would, I'll show you guys at the end. I don't want to wake her up. So make sure you watch all the way to the end to see the new puppy. I'm going to start this thing off. I'm going to hit my button. I have no idea what's coming. This is what's going to be good. Here we go. Lord M, what is your favorite prison made weapon that was your go-to? Well, well, you know, prison weapons, my go-to. I once hit a person with a mop ring and fucking crushed their face. So whatever was handy. But I used to have three shanks. Uh, I had actually your favorite one, as you call it, because I paid more money for it. It was made at a machine shop in the, in the Unicorn. But I had one outside my door along a pipe when I was in Atlanta. I had one in a coffee creamer, and I had one under a, the bed thing so I can get it real quick. So my, my favorite one was uh, the one I actually the one I kept in my creamer can because it was just such a nice one. If I was going to the yard or I thought something was in a kickoff, it was mine. Other than that, it was just quick weapon grabbing. Uh, when I was younger in prison, when I when I did little short times, I used to make razor combs. And uh, you take a comb and you take the razor blade, you heat it up, and then you put it in there. You, you make the notch, and literally it's out and cut cut somebody really quick. But you wouldn't kill them, but it was cut. What about you? I, I laughed when you started talking about that because you're just so honest and you give no fucks, you know? <laughs> like, you're like, oh, this is my favorite one, to bash someone's skull. Like, you're just so honest. That's just what you were, you know that. You know what prison is like. You do, you know, the, what weapon? Whatever's fucking near me. There's no such thing as a fair fight. Like, you just, yeah, you just grab for stuff. Um, These hands. <laughs> I did not like to get caught up with weapons. So if I had to grab something really quick, it was something heavy. Lock in a sock works great. Th these are items that you can possess, you know? So like, I didn't want to be caught with a shank or with a razor blade out of the freaking razor into something because that's more time. I'm trying to go home. So anything I could find or anything I could put together really quickly that I could like take apart really fast too is what I would go for. Did you ever hit someone with a lock in a sock? <clears throat> you know, Larry, um, I'm going to have to plead the fifth. And talk to you on. Well, you know the statute's up, Jess. <laughs> you know, things unless happen. it's happened really lately. <laughs> Nothing's happened lately. Um, shit got crazy, but I'm I'm a little more PC than you on my channel. There's certain things that I haven't talked about yet. People are waiting for me to um, like run out of content and run out of stories. I have a backlog of things I haven't shared on the internet yet. Well, maybe, you know, those are the things I'm sure some women want to know. I know men do. They'll ask me. I, I don't give a shit because if statute of limitations is up, I'm okay. You know, <laughs> if not, I, I shut my mouth. I, I'm sure you've seen your share of stabbings and, and, and stuff in the joint and uh, stuff like that. Is drugs rampant there in Arkansas and state? Yeah, and you know, it's hard to stay sober when you're getting locked up and I, I could find whatever I wanted. I could make alcohol. I could stay fucked up the whole time if I wanted to. So that's really hard for someone like me. I, you know, I was a junkie all my life. So now I have nine years sober and I'm doing really well, but man, it was a struggle when I'm 17, 18, 19. Like I didn't care. I didn't want to stay sober. So I didn't. <laughs> You look good, congratulations, just stay the course. And as I tell people, I, I, I was always a guy who never preached abstinence, I preached control. You control whatever it is in life and don't let it control you. Now, once you realize you can't control something, then stop it, that's controlling it. Elliot said, if you could take one luxury item with you into prison, what would you take? An espresso machine, <laughs> I don't know. I like coffee. Instant coffee's gross. Keefe coffee or Folgers, it's not good. So I'd take an espresso machine. Really? That's what you'd take? Okay, I gotta go better than that. You do. If I could take one luxury item, of course, you know, a man's brain thinks differently. 
obviously you know I, this is not a this is going to be funny but it's not we used to joke when we were in prison you know if we i know it's just like what are we doing well you you know what a fifi is obviously when people don't know what a fifi is i'm gonna make one on, on, on here once you know jessica i know it sounds crazy and we used to joke about this even in prison if we ever took one of those rub, you know, rubber dolls, you know how much you could rent that? When I was in prison, we used to rent out porno magazines. You know? So you'd bring a doll to rent it out? <laughs> well, no, I know, I know that sounded crazy. We used to rent out the porno magazines for a dollar a night, four stamps, you know, money. And we and it was a dollar a night, and we'd tell them, don't bring these pages back sticky, you know, whatever it is. And, and, and believe it or not, they had these magazines called Pirates and Privates, and they were the triple X, the hardcore stuff. But it was so much fun. I, and I, we used to talk about that. Man, I wish if there's one thing I could take, a rubber doll. And I know it's weird. I just know it's weird. But if you really want to talk what can get your mind, and it's a serious end of it, what keeps a lot of men's minds off of the, 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 the heartache, the family issues, is... What you can do, you know, get away, masturbate. I'm sure women are the same way. I used to hear the stories. And, and it's a way of just getting away and then going to bed or reading or whatever you're doing. And it, I know it sounds, it's not, it's really, it's normal. It's just normal stuff. And I, I end up, you know the story, I don't know if you know that, Jessica. I got put in the hole for masturbating in my bed, in my cell, at one in the morning, alone. How the fuck do you go to bed? you know, go to the hole for masturbating. Who doesn't fucking masturbate? I don't think people understand that that's against the rules in prison. Like, no. yeah. So weird. Have, have you ever, ever seen anybody, have you girls got caught doing that and anybody go to the hole for something like that? I mean, the girlfriend drama is so crazy in female prisons. And then they have to separate the girlfriends. And in Arkansas, if you got caught three times having sex with your girlfriend, consensual, inmate, sex. If you got caught, it's a sex crime and they'll charge you for it, for having a girlfriend. Are you kidding me? They threatened it. I don't know, I had never seen anyone do it, but it was very well known that they would threaten that to try to get the women to not be girlfriends. And it was crazy. And now in female prisons, will there be guards? Now, are they, are they male guards? There's a lot of male guards in female prisons. It's like 10 to one. Oh, wow, see the women, You'll have occasional women prison guards, but not, you know, big majority of men. Do they, I mean, I'm sure they're a bunch of perverts too there themselves, right? I mean, I've seen a lot of shit, you know, guards hitting on inmates or telling other inmates, I saw you in the shower and just creepy shit like that. In Arkansas, the men patted us down every fucking day and they'd have a way to do it where they'd go like down your sleeve with two fingers here here and in between your legs to make sure you don't have like a shank or whatever or like food from the chow hall bro get a life like no one cares about yeah. cornbread um but yeah they, right? <laughs> they did that we did yeah they did that with us crazy yeah there's a lot of men in, in female prisons i mean i know of female guards and female staff members that i've covered for guys having sex with them you know, in, in, in they take like, watch the door for me and whatever, and you know, bang if somebody comes and they're in there, and, and I mean, it was somewhat normal for us, I guess, not normal, but not everybody they had to like the guy or whatever it was. Well, prison's not I'm normal. I'm sure the women, pr you know, so prison yeah. culture is not normal to like the outside world. So like normal to us is very different than normal to people that have never been to prison. So, yeah, normal. Right. Yeah. That, that is true. Okay, I'm gonna get it right out with you. Did you meet anybody in prison? No. Like, did I did I have a prison girlfriend? Is that what you're asking me? Yeah, yeah, I mean, did you meet anybody? No, okay. Uh, what about a guard? No. So... <laughs> Look, you did that one like, damn, no. No, I, I... I'm not saying all cops are bad. I'm just saying I fucking hated most of the corrections officers that I met, so... <laughs> Your boy, are we a lot, a lot, a lot of like. <laughs> I, I get what you're saying. You had that disdain, as we did, and unless they treated you nice and they kept being a normal human being. If they I treated don't know, us how nice, how long were you in, nice. Jess? I was always a short timer. So a year here, six months here, two and a half years here. You know, so my conversations with the guards was like, "Give me some toilet paper, thank you." <laughs> that was my conversations. Tippy toes. Are conjugal visits a real thing or a myth? And if so, under what circumstances do they happen? Okay, they're not a myth. 
In the federal prison, there is no conjugal visits. Let me let, let get that straight right now. Anybody tells you there's conjugal visits in the feds is long. It's bullshit. Not one prison, whether it's a camp, low, medium, high, there's no conjugal visits. Do people get laid? Fuck yeah. I mean, I seen guys and we'd cover for them in the visiting room on the thing. A guard would turn around, let the girl get banged over the table. Whatever, behind the vending machines. I know people got pregnant and all whole work. Uh, but no, so it's not a myth. I'll refer to Jessica on this one on the state. Jess? Um, I've never seen one myself. I've never had one. Um, but I think there are some prisons that do it. New York might do it. You have to be married. You have to be married for a certain amount of time. You can't have any disciplinaries. Like there's a lot of stuff that you have to go through in order to get that. And they're really rare. You know, um, so I've just never seen one. To me, it's a unicorn, because I've never seen it. Well, you know, I do know of guys who've had them, and I do know, and you're right, everything you just said there's 100% right. You can't have any disciplines, and I think they should have them. One, it could keep families together a little bit better. And it's not just the sex, it's the connection for a few hours with your wife in an intimate, you know, setting, if you want to call it that. Together, uh, or like stay a weekend or something, like. Right, well they have them, like, they, they stay uh, maybe an overnight stay, you know. I've seen places, but I think it's a good way to keep people in control too. You know, you know you got next month, you got a conjugal visit. You think you're gonna fucking do anything to fuck that conjugal visit up? No. That's a great point. <laughs> Big Jam Burko, has anyone ever stolen or tried to steal your drugs, food, or anything from you in prison? I mean, bitches can try, no, I'm just kidding. So a lot of times your stuff is locked up. So you have a locker or a trunk with a lock on it. So that prevents people from stealing from you. And what's weird is I know a lot of people that have never been a prisoner are not gonna understand this. Stealing from another inmate is so heavily frowned upon. It's us versus them. So I can steal from the guard, like a pen or maybe a cigarette or whatever, but I can't steal from another inmate because if you do, you're catching these hands. It's a big deal. Whether you steal something as meaningless as a soup, it doesn't matter. It's the principle behind it. So I know it sounds weird that like cons won't steal from each other, like, but they won't and like i said you can lock your stuff up has someone tried to steal from me um i think someone stole my shower shoes one time and i caused a scene and i got them back that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> there you go ah great question uh you know no one stole from me but jessica's 100 percent right it's called honor among thieves if you got caught we'd beat the fuck out of you if you don't have to worry about the guard you'd be checking in yourself to the hole so prevent yourself from getting fucked up but they did it. I mean, you watch them, and we knew of a person who was a scumbag. Let's say if we knew somebody was protected or kind of like a snitch with the counselors, they would fuck with him. They'd pop his lock. You know, that's easy. We'd pop locks all the time. We, we had a hard-covered book that you can actually put on the top lock and punch it down, and you can actually punch that lock. So we used to do that. Obviously, if we didn't like the person or, or we needed, you know, we were told, hey, I'm going to the hole, man, get my shit out of my locker. He's caught on the yard with something and he's getting taken to the hole. So we know, we go, man, get to my fucking locker. I got the shit in the locker or whatever. It's in the fucking soups or whatever it is. And we'd go get it. So we'd have to pop a lock. But Jessica's right about that. Nobody robbed from me outwardly, but you made me smile just with the shower shoes because... You know, everybody had shower shoes, men more so, because you know it's all over the place in the shower. So it's just what it was. But no, I, I was lucky, and I think it was just because I was in with the right people and knew the right people, but everybody can get stolen. But if they get caught, they're gonna get fucked up. That I can tell you. I think sometimes too, people try to test you with that, especially on the female side. Like, is she gonna cause a scene over a ramen? Can I take this and then maybe next time I can push for a little bit more? So you really have to stand up for yourself and let people know you cannot fuck with me. Absolutely, you know, as they say, you know, the weak get uh, eaten and, and that is true. All right, next one. Okay, Lou, are you two gonna bang? <laughs> We've had it easy so far. I knew some fucked up shit was coming. Uh, no, I'm a little too old. Jessica's great. I want to help her in any way possible. Now you answer. I'm not answering All that right. shit. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> Good one. Okay. This is not a prison one. Favorite and least favorite fast food restaurant. Least favorite McDonald's. I mean, I'll eat it, but you know, favorite fast food. I guess Wendy's, that Baconator slaps. I gotta go different with that. You know, my first meal out of prison was in number one because I couldn't order. I was so fucking mental. 
My least favorite, probably Burger King. My best by far, and I could fucking eat a dozen of them, is White Castle. Oh, really? You, know, you don't see them down south. They used to have crystals. Now, actually, Orlando just built the biggest White Castle in the country over in Disney. And I fucking eat those. And you know when you get fucked up, you used to get stoned and fucking go eat those. I'd eat a dozen. I mean, I'm 250 pounds. Maybe that's it. Oh, God, I got to lose weight. It's 245. <laughs> Evan French. Hey, Larry, love your videos. I'm just wondering if you or Jessica have ever crushed on a cop in prison. Hell to the no. <laughs> wow, good. Come on, be honest. I'm going to I'm going to be honest. I was never physically attracted to any CO ever. Um I met a lot of, you know, southern <clears throat> hillbilly CEOs. So, <laughs> my memory of getting arrested, I wasn't like, "Oh, that cop is really cute." No, they're slamming me into the ground or busting open my door. I'm not like, "Oh, he's cute though." Ever. <laughs> so, you never actually once you were, maybe, you know, I, I'm gonna go again, uh, on my end, I go again. So maybe it's just because of the length of time I was at play. You know, when you're at a place for a long period of time, you settle in and, and you're whatnot. You were like a long timer. I was a short timer too. So maybe there's that disconnect. If I'm in there for 10 or 20 years, maybe, but I was, I was a short, a short timer. And it depends on where you are in your life. Like I went to prison older than you are now. I went in at 34 and I got out of 46. So I, I kind of understood sexuality a lot and all that, myself and all that kind of stuff. Just like you went away when you were young. You were young, wild, good looking girl, had what you want on the streets. I mean, let's throw uh, up a mug shot. I've, I've come a long way. <laughs> I get it, I get it, trust me. Yeah, you saw me, I get it. You know, when you say guard or cop, there, there was a, uh, a worker that worked in a library or the school library, you know, that area of the prison. And I used to think, man, I'd like to fuck her, man. And you know, every day it goes by. Now, I, I would never do anything out of line. I just wasn't that way. I guess maybe it's just fantasy. I didn't do anything about it. I mean, again, there's guys that, you know, they call it door hopping and they go, you know, that kind of stuff. But did you see in your prisons, like the women want that fucking guard and go after them kind of in their own way? I did. That's a whole video, so I won't, I won't spoil too much. Um, but yeah, you know, it happens. It happens. <clears throat> there are definitely, you know, it starts with a look. It starts really small. Just a little, if you can look at me and like I see that you make eye contact, with, eye contact with me in a little way, you know the look. Then the girls will push back a little harder. Maybe I ask you to, you know, do something that's against the rules, like something really small. Give me an extra this or that or whatever, you know, and over time, it happens. It happens in every prison in America. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I've seen it all the time. So that was a good one. All right, here we go. Oh, this is the last one. And then you guys okay. can see the puppy. This is from Anonymous. What is one thing, either in prison or out of prison, that worries you the most? Oh, Jesus. I am the poster child for anxiety. <laughs> mental health issues. I think the one thing that worries me probably is something bad happening to my family. You know, that's, that's top of the list. On the day to day, it's just traveling. Like, you know, if I'm on a car, if I'm the passenger in a car, I get really anxious. But above all, it's something with my family. Great answer. Mine always was when I was in prison and out was something happening to my child, my junior and my daughter. My daughter was 15 months old. My son was just turned seven when I went to prison. And I used to worry, God forbid, you know, I had some issues and I always worried about if something happened, I couldn't be there. Cause that's the one thing I said, I'd get out and I'd kill him. Uh, just that's the one thing I can't, that's the one thing. Uh, but as far as like, you know, I, 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 I've learned this, George Burns said it. He says, they asked him how do he live to a hundred? He goes, I didn't worry. He goes, because if I could change it, I change it. If I can't, why fucking worry about it? And he's right. I mean, it's that simple, but it's true. If you can do it and you can change it, then fucking change it and stop being a procrastinator and try. And once you try and you can't change it, don't fucking worry. I know it sounds easy, but I've got more and more like that. I don't, and I also don't want for a lot of things, you know. I don't need a big house. I don't need this. I just don't. I'm, I, I lived in a fucking prison cell. I have friends of mine who have mansions. I mean mansions, 10,000 square foot houses. And their friends were great and I was at parties with them and I go, it just never, I never wanted it. You know, it's just, it does something in me that just, I mean, don't get me wrong, I like to live nice, I do live nice, I go where I'm gonna go, I love to travel, I love to do things, I'd rather do things 
make memories. And here's why, Jess, because what survived, I mean, I was a multimillionaire, so maybe I had my own limousines and horses and houses and boats, so you don't want for anymore. But it never made me totally happy. I think what survived me in prison wasn't the limo that I owned. It was the things that I did, the trips that I take, and the, the life that I lived. So the memories of, of doing things and not just owning something, you know. I think when you've had everything, like you can buy anything, you can have any possession, and then you lose it all, and you live in a half bathroom with another man. <laughs> like, you know, you don't think about the limo. You think about being on the beach that day, and like, you know, those are the things that, that your, you know, your heart sticks with. You just said it right, 100%, and, and that's the end of the questions. So I want everybody here now to look at Jess. She's gonna bring up the most gorgeous dog she just got. Look at this dog. Um, She just woke up too, you you were so good. Oh, look at that little bull dog, look at it. Eight weeks old, right? She's eight weeks. What's her name? Bowie or Zoe, the kids are fighting over it. <laughs> don't worry, he don't know his vowels, what? Goofy ear. <laughs> So cute. Oh, look You're at so cute and you were so good the whole time. You didn't bark or anything. Hey Jess, I want to thank you for doing this great card pick game. I think that was fun. Thank you for having me. Hopefully we can link up in person and do a video in person. Thanks again Jess. Give the hug. Give the kids a hug too. And, and, and keep up the great work, honey. Alright, bye. bye.